are going to talk uh, about another kind of rip-off. We're going to talk about the welfare rip-off by a lot of people who claim refugee status. Would you believe, this is the figures, the Centrelink benefits have gone up nearly 40% to an estimated $628 million over two years. Hello, I'm Jonathan Holmes and on Media Watch tonight we're going to talk about the rip-off perpetrated by people like Howard Sattler, who feeds his listeners figures he hasn't checked and doesn't understand because he thinks and hopes they'll lap it up. And here's another rip-off artist, this time in Sydney. Now the total cost of Centrelink benefits has increased to refugees 40% in two years. Now 628 million. Sit down, don't start smashing the doors down. And a rip-off artist in Brisbane. Don't let anyone say we are not generous financially as well. There's been a 40% surge to an estimated $628 million per annum in just two years. Those figures didn't come direct from the government, but from Channel 9. And it's Nine News that's perpetrated the biggest rip-off, because they're profoundly misleading. Its story aired nationally last Monday night. Here's how Peter Overton introduced it in New South Wales and the ACT. With no end in sight to the current wave of asylum seekers, Nine News can reveal the true welfare cost to Australian taxpayers. A special investigation has uncovered the massive Centrelink bill to care for our new refugees. Current wave of asylum seekers. True welfare cost. New refugees. Remember those words. And here's how reporter Denham Hitchcock's story opened. The journey is desperate and dangerous, but effective. This year, more than 1,600 boat people have made it to Christmas Island, and almost all will make it to the mainland. Many more refugees arrive by plane. Figures obtained under Freedom of Information show last year, 13,500 asylum seekers were granted refugee status. Almost three out of every four are on Centrelink benefits. Sinister music, images of boat people, three out of four on benefits. But who were those 13,500 people that nine calls asylum seekers? According to the Department of Immigration... The vast majority of these people came to Australia on valid visas as part of our dedicated offshore refugee resettlement program or were proposed as special humanitarian program entrants. Largely, they were not asylum seekers. In fact, more than 11,000 of those visas were granted before they arrived in Australia to people who'd been waiting sometimes for years in what immigration ministers like to call the queue. Nearly 2,300 more visas went to people who arrived by plane and then asked for asylum. How many visas went last year to asylum seekers arriving by boat? Precisely 206. So whatever Nine's figures show, they tell us almost nothing about boat people. In fact, they tell us nothing about recently arrived refugees in general, and Nine knew it. These are the documents that Nine acquired from Centrelink under Freedom of Information. They show how many people on different kinds of refugee visas were receiving benefits on a particular day. Each contained a statement like this. The data reflects the number of customers who have ever held a refugee and humanitarian visa. They might have arrived in Australia at any time since the Second World War. Many of them are now Australian citizens. They may have worked for decades before getting the age pension, or arrived as small children 20 years ago and had a baby of their own and got a baby bonus last year. So how did Nine News work out from these figures that of last year's refugee intake... Almost three out of every four are on Centrelink benefits. Well, Nine wouldn't tell us. But the simple fact is there's just no way of telling from the figures how many of Centrelink's clients arrived in Australia last year as refugees. Centrelink cannot account for the figures in the Channel 9 news report. The figures do not reflect the data Centrelink provided. Denham Hitchcock's mangling of the figures got far worse. Looking further into the records of those accepted into the country since 1990, benefits are paid to nearly one in four. But the Centrelink figures don't relate just to people who've been accepted as refugees since 1990. They include anyone receiving a benefit who's ever been given a refugee visa, a potential pool of some 700,000 Australian residents. Nine's claim that one in four of those people are on benefits doesn't stack up. And neither does this figure. 
The cost to the taxpayer this year will be $628 million, a 40% increase since the Rudd government came to power. Again, Centrelink says that figure can't be extracted from the data it gave Nine. It appears that Nine News has made assumptions about payment rates to calculate figures and misinterpreted point-in-time data as annual figures. The tables tell us only how many people were receiving some benefit on one particular day. You can't assume all of them were getting the full allowance or that they received it for a whole year. Calculating the true cost to the taxpayer, says Centrelink, would be a large, complex, expensive and lengthy exercise. You can bet Nine didn't do that. But hey, what does it matter? The one thing that is true is this. On June the 30th this year, some 12,000 more people who had once been granted refugee visas were receiving Centrelink benefits of some kind than on the same day two years earlier. The most likely explanation for that has nothing to do with boat people or our recent refugee intake in general which incidentally was lower last financial year than it was in 2005 to 6. What's really changed in the last two years is the state of the Australian economy. As Centrelink puts it, The counts between years need to take account of the prevailing economic conditions, such as the increase in unemployment flowing from the global financial crisis. Refugees tend to be in higher risk, low skill jobs and tend to be employed in industries more affected by economic downturns. That's the factor Nine never bothered to mention. Hard times in Australia for people who first came here last year or decades ago as refugees. Nine's entire story is a total furphy. In a response to Media Watch, News Director Darren Wick claims... It's critical to your inquiry to understand that Centrelink advised Nine News on how to achieve accurate calculations from this data. Data was constantly checked and cross-checked. We stand by the story. Centrelink agrees it explained the figures it provided to Nine, but says... We are unaware of anyone within Centrelink who provided assistance in further use and recalculations based on the data provided. The fact is, Nine got its figures wrong. It's either too enumerate to understand that, or too cynical to care. And now to...